All right, just gonna show you guys something very interesting. Trinitarianism is a heresy. However, Trinitarianism is only half right, okay? It is partly correct. You see, there is some truth to Trinitarianism, okay? It is a false doctrine, okay? The Trinity is a completely pagan, it's totally occultic, comes from witchcraft, comes from Satanism. But there is some truth regarding the distinction in the Godhead, okay? Um, the thing that, that sets the Godhead apart from modalism and oneness is that there is distinction in the Godhead, okay? The Godhead can't separate, okay? M uh, oneness and modalists, they don't believe the Godhead can separate. They think that God just comes in different modes and just manifests different ways. No, there is distinction in the Godhead. And the, Trin the Trinity heresy, it is a heresy, but it is correct in saying that there is distinction in the Godhead. That's why I say it's only half right, okay? It's wrong in saying that God three persons that are all fully God somehow, okay, that is pagan, okay? But there is a distinction. I'm going to show you that. Okay, Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Uh, I'm going to show you examples of distinction in the Godhead. Uh, and Jesus, when he was baptized, verse 16, uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost, descending like a dove. I'm going to point something out too. It was like a dove. Okay, he was descending like a dove. It was not a dove, it was like a dove, okay? So you see these pictures of the Holy Ghost as a dove, it's uh, false, and lighting upon him. Verse 17, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. What do you have here? Okay, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, on earth, the God, God the Father is in heaven, and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, descends like a dove. There you have distinction there, and this does make a problem for the... Uh, uh, modalist heretics, because you see the different, because if God just comes in three different modes, what do you have here? Because they're interact. because you see the members of the Godhead interacting with each other. So there is distinction there, clearly. Next scripture I want to go to is, uh, where is it? First Corinthians chapter 15, beginning at verse 24. Another good proof text showing distinction in the Godhead. First Corinthians 15, 24. Okay, then cometh the end. Actually, I'll start at verse 23 just to get some context here. But every man uh, in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Verse 24, then cometh the end, when he shall have, talking about Jesus Christ, obviously the Son of God, when he shall have delivered the kingdom up to God, sorry, delivered up the kingdom to God, which is referring to God the Father, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. You know, till his enemies be made his footstool. You see, again, when you see Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father in Acts chapter 7, I think it's uh, verses 54 to 55, it's until his enemies be made his footstool. Okay? It's not like a permanent, he's always at the right hand of the Father. No, okay? But the, again, that, that does show distinction, obviously. Uh, verse 26 The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Verse 27, for he hath put things for he hath put all things under his feet, but when he saith all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is expected, which did put all things under him. Look at verse 28. And when all things are shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also be subject, or so also himself, be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Okay, what do you have here in 1 Corinthians 15, 23 to 28? You have the, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, delivering the kingdom up to God the Father, and then he's submitting himself subject unto God the Father. Okay, so again, you see a distinction there. You see the Son bringing the kingdom up to the Father, and then he's submitting to God the Father. So again, Trinitarianism is half right. Okay, there is distinction. Now, last proof text I'll show you is in Revelation chapter 5. This is uh, another good proof text showing that there is distinction in the Godhead, beginning at verse 1, down to verse, uh, I think it's verse, I'll go, I'm going to go down to verse 10. Starting at verse 1. And I saw the right hand of him that sat upon the throne, okay, for any God the Father, written uh, written within on the backside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open a book open the book and to loose the seals thereof no man in heaven nor on earth nor under the earth was able to open the book and to look thereon and i wept verse 4 i wept because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book neither to look thereon and i got to verse 5 and one of the elders saith unto me weep not behold the line of the tribe of judah Yes, Jesus Christ is a Jew. Okay, contrary to the replacement theology heretics, Jesus Christ is a Jew. He's the line of the tribe of Judah. 
Okay, interesting little side note. When you see the Jerusalem flag with the Judah with the lion on it, it's actually picturing Jesus Christ. They they they're, they're not they don't know, but they're they're actually symbolizing Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah. The root of David hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Verse six, and beh and I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood stood a lamb. Okay, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. John one twenty nine. Uh, as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven seven eyes, which are the seven spirits, uh, seven seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came. Look at this. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. Okay. Verse eight. And when he had taken the book, and the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, and having having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which were the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us a God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So what do you have here? You have the Son of God, Jesus Christ, taking the book of the seals out of the Father's hands. So again, you see a distinction there. Okay, and again, it makes a problem for the whole modalist thing because what do you do there? Okay, if, if God is just three different modes, why do you have the Son taking the book out of the Father's hand? So, I wanted to show you guys that. So Trinitarianism is only half right. There is distinction in the Godhead. We see that clearly. However, God is one being. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 30, I and my Father are one. John chapter uh, 17, verses 21 to 22, Jesus again says, you know, talking, speaking to the Father, Jesus is talking to the Father. He says, we are one. Uh, John chapter 14, verses 7 to 9, and John chapter 12, verses 44 to 45, Jesus is clear when you see him, you're seeing the Father. Uh, John, sorry, not John, First or Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 to 15, and Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, uh, it makes it clear that Jesus Christ is the image of God, the Father's person. Okay, that's why when you're seeing him, you're seeing the Father. So God is one being, okay? God is one person. There are four references to the word person in reference to God, and all of them are singular. And I showed that in one of my other videos, uh, showing how called God is one person, okay? God is one person, however, there is distinction, okay? Your body, soul, and spirit can separate. Same with God. So I want to show you guys that. The, Trin the Trinity heresy is a heresy, but... Like all false doctrines, there is some truth mixed into it, okay? And that truth is that there is distinction in the Godhead. So I want to show you guys that. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.